Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Author, leadership, and teen development speaker Joe Woodley coming to you with another key moment for faith. Coast to coast, around the world, I'm just so grateful that you decide to take this walk of faith with me today. Before we go any further, make sure you click on the subscribe button there below. Like this video, share this video. Invite your friends to this channel. Invite your family members to this channel. Invite your, your cousins to this channel. Invite your neighbors to this channel. You know, dare I even say invite your enemies to this channel. And they may just become your friends. This channel is all about exalting God, edifying and equipping you, the believer. So today I want to talk to you about a really important key, a component that is necessary for uh, necessary for you to really begin to see the manifestation of uh, the things of God in your life, uh, to see His His complete protection, His guidance, His wisdom. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, finding the victory through submission. Finding victory through submission. Now, this is the exact opposite of what the world teaches and how the world teaches uh, victory. The world teaches victory by uh, means of destruction, overpowering, uh, destruction, destroying, uh, pressing your enemy into the ground, the ground, grinding your enemy into the ground. It's all about offense going on the offense but the word of God teaches us that as believers we find victory we find our power we find our strength through an act of submission and a lot of people a lot of believers hate the word submission uh, because that word and how it has been implemented has been so misused throughout the years for centuries Submission has been used to justify segregation, has been used to justify slavery, has been used to justify injustices, has been used to uh, justify manipulation and oppression. Uh, and so that word submission uh, has been completely taken out of context. That's not the biblical definition of submission. And so leaders unfortunately have used that term uh, to turn their congregants uh, into servants, uh, not servants of the kingdom, but their own personal servants. And many of us know of situations or have found ourselves in situations like that. But that is not what uh, this was meant to be used for, why that term is put in the Bible, why it's so pronounced. As a matter of fact, one of the most famous scriptures from the Bible uh, perhaps uh, perhaps one of the easiest ones to remember uh, comes to us from James 4 and 7 and says, Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, I often hear this scripture misquoted, taken completely out of context. Usually what you hear is, you know, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you, which is not the complete text there. Why is it important to include both parts? Well, the second part, resist the devil and he will flee from you, has no power and no authority without the submission to God. Without submission, there is no victory. Without submission, there is no power. For the belief, all of our power, all of our strength, all of our ability, our anointing, our knowledge, our know-how, all come from the Lord. And without an act of submission, we have no power to resist the devil in a way where he will flee from us. We may tell him, no, I don't want to do it, go away, leave me alone, but you don't have any authority. You have to think about it like this. We're in a kingdom system, and in a kingdom, there are laws, there are rules, and there are regulations. Just as like you are a citizen of the United States, or Canada, or Mexico, or a European nation or an Asian nation or an African nation, wherever you are in the world, when you are a citizen of a country, there's a governing body and that governing body has rules and regulations and laws. 
And in order for you to reap the benefit of those rules, regulations, and those laws, you have to submit yourself to the authorities that uh, or that run that nation. And so the same principle what for those of us who are kingdom people. As kingdom people, we are citizens of the kingdom. Which kingdom? We're, since we're citizens of the kingdom of God. And so as citizens of the kingdom of God, if we don't submit ourselves to the jurisdiction, to the authority of God, then we have no power to enforce what God says in his word. This is why we see so many believers who are, who are struggling with, with various issues, who never seem to overcome those issues. We find ourselves in cycles of sin and, and cycles of depression, cycles of destructive behavior. In many cases, this is because we have failed to submit everything over to God. We have failed to surrender our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole, our whole soul over to the Lord. And then we expect for the kingdom to back us up, even though we have not submitted as citizens of the kingdom. So when you think about submission and, and uh, from, a, from a standpoint of being a believer, this is our only tool. This is the only tool that we have to resist the enemy and force him to go away. You can pray all you want. You can cry out to God all you want. You can, uh, you can say whatever words of affirmation you want to say. You can read whatever books you want to read. None of those things is going to give you the, the authority to act on behalf of the kingdom unless you submit to the authority of the kingdom. It's just that simple. You know, if you want healing in your body, you've got to submit or surrender to the authority of the kingdom. If you want to see things happen in your life, you want to be able to move in a way where you see signs and wonders and miracles are happening in your life, you have to submit yourself to the authority of the kingdom. Why? Because of all the rules and the regulations, right, and the laws uh, don't happen unless the authority of the kingdom backs that up. Again, the authority of the kingdom backs that up. That means there are certain benefits that you receive as a citizen. If someone is in your country, let's say illegally, and they're not a citizen, well, then they don't have the same rights that you have because you have you have particular rights that are, that are endowed to you just by the mere fact of you being a citizen of whatever nation you are. Doesn't matter whether it's the United States, again Canada, wherever you are in the world, the same principles apply for those of us who are kingdom people. So. If you want the enemy to, to flee from you, this does not mean that he's not going to return. He is always going to pull tricks and stunts and he has strategies galore to try to take God's people down. But the only way you're going to defeat him is not with your own fists, is not with your own might, is not with your own intellect or understanding. It is under submission to the will, the word, the authority of God. That's it. That is the only tool that we have. Again, you can pray all you want. You can hoop and holler and jump around and scream and kick and throw a fit. Won't make a lick of difference. The only way you're going to see the enemy moved the only way you want to see the situation moved out of your way, the only way you want to see the mountains laid low, the only way you want to see certain things happen is you have to submit to God. And then, so the submission is a prerequisite to the enemy fleeing. That is a prerequisite. It is a requirement. That is the only way that the enemy is going to flee. So I want to encourage you guys uh, in this short, short video today. Um, that uh, that you need to take a look at your hearts. Scripture says to take inventory of your hearts, and we need to take inventory of our hearts every day, and ask yourself: Have I totally surrendered everything over to the Lord? Have I given everything, my whole heart, my whole mind, my whole soul, over to the Lord? Or am I holding on to something? Am I holding on to something that's keeping me? That's keeping me from exercising the authority that comes with being a citizen of the kingdom. 
because you may live in a kingdom. In other words, you may go to church weekly, and, and churches are going to be opening, hopefully, be soon within the next few weeks. So, you know, you'll be going back to church, and you'll be clapping your hands and singing your songs and doing a do si do and shouting hallelujah and slapping your neighbor high fives and all of that good stuff is going to be going on. But until you get serious about submitting yourself under the authority of the kingdom, under the authority of God, until you get serious about that, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to move. The same issues that you go in Sunday after Sunday dealing with, the same issues that you walk into your job with on Monday morning, the same issues that when you open up the doors of your office week after week and month after month, those issues are going to remain until and unless you surrender. When you make the choice to surrender, when you make the choice to give up and just say, God, here I am, take me, use me for upbuilding your kingdom. When you make that decision, then the enemy will flee from you. Very quick story. And then I'm going to uh, let you guys uh, go. So uh, probably 2005 was probably the most difficult year of my life. I mean, I had been through a lot of stuff, you know, as it was. And I'm not talking about health issues, but that's a whole different story. Yes, I, I've come close to death before, but I'm talking about my, my, my life being wrecked and potentially destroyed. And so 2005 was the most difficult year of my life. I mean, everything was going crazy for me. I was, uh, I was in the middle of a, of a custody battle. Uh, I uh, lost my job at uh, one of the top companies in the world. I was a, I was a uh, corporate security specialist. I was making very good money and fantastic benefits. Everything seemed like, you know, I, mean, I was rolling. Uh, and so again, a custody battle, fantastic benefits. Uh, on top of that, because the company was was, was, uh, was doing some what they call restructuring, uh, so that's why I ended up losing that uh, that job. Uh, on top of that, my car gets stolen. Lit someone literally jumps in my car, uh, goes for a joyride, you know, and uh, they proceed to shoot my car up. And so there were bullet holes in my car. There was all sorts of things that were going on. I was under a tremendous amount of stress, a tremendous amount of, of, of assault by the enemy every single day. Uh, some of those things were precipitated by choices that I made. So I do take responsibility for some of the choices that, were, that I made, you know, because for, for believers, this is important. But sometimes we don't want to take responsibility. Everything is not always the devil. Sometimes the enemy, the greatest enemy is you. But certainly I opened the door for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc in my life. And I was just a mess. I was hurting. I was I was angry. I was I don't I don't think there was a day that I did not shed a tear. I mean it was it was hard. I remember being in a meeting and sitting in a meeting and just breaking down in tears. And I'm supposed to be doing a professional meeting and I'm breaking down in tears because the strain and the weight of everything that was going on in my life at that time, um, it, was, it was a mess. It was absolutely immense. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. That was my worst enemy. If it wasn't for God's grace, I probably would have lost my mind. And that's not an exaggeration. So one day I get home and uh, I was just, I was just disheveled. I was disheveled emotionally. I was disheveled spiritually. I was disheveled. I looked disheveled. I, I just looked broken down. I was tired. I was beat up, and I didn't know which way to go. And I, you know, no matter what and how hard I tried, I mean, the, the assault was just constantly on me. It was, it was, it was worse than white on rice. And so uh, I get home one day, and this is, this is a wonderful way that the Holy Spirit comforted me. So I get home one day and I'm not going to get into the whole story about what happened. I'm going to share with you about how I received the Holy Spirit. I'm going to do a separate video on receiving the Holy Spirit um, and, and, and how you would, how you can receive the Holy Spirit and how this is real for today. This is not something that happened 2,000 years ago and this, the apostles had it and that's the end of it. You know, you too can receive the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to say this, that when I got home and I surrendered to God, I submitted my life, truly submitted my life to God. I was saved 
Sure, I love Boba Boy, but I'm talking about real surrender, total submission, total submission. When I fell on my knees that day, and I cried out to the Lord. He came in and he heard my cries. And my situation began to change. Uh, and it wasn't changing before that, but it began to change because I had submitted myself, surrendered myself to the Lord, completely surrendered myself to the Lord. Now, that didn't mean I never faced another problem again in my life, but my perspective changed, number one. My perspective changed, and I could hear from God much clearer than at any point previously in my life. And He continues to speak to me in a more uh, clear way as I mature in the faith. The point is that you are not going to be able to get the enemy off your back. You cannot fight the enemy on your own. You need the authority, you need the backing, you need the co-signature of the kingdom. And the only way that's going to happen is as a, as a citizen of the kingdom, that you surrender and submit to God. And when you surrender and you submit to God, there are rules and there are regulations and there are laws and bylaws. And some of us don't like rules and regulations, but they're all there to protect us. They're all there to empower us. They're all there to equip us. And they're there to cover us. And they're a call to action. So when you submit yourself to the Lord, it's not because God wants to beat you up. It's not because he wants to manipulate you. He's not trying to hurt you. He wants to empower you to resist the devil with power and authority. You can tell him, go away all day long. He is not going to leave you alone unless you have the backing of the kingdom of heaven. So I appreciate you guys joining me today. Remember, James 4 and 7. If you do what? Submit yourself to God. That's the number one thing. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Remember the prerequisite to victory. The only way you will find victory, the only path to victory, is through submission. Thank you for joining me, guys. I love each and one of you, every one of you. I'm praying for your continued success and continued victory in, in the things of God. Don't forget to click on this channel, like this channel, sub subscribe to this channel. And I look forward to connecting with you again here very, very soon. God bless you.